And now, it's time for another Dice Tower review with Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower! Here we got a game called Hagoth, Builder of Ships. Sounds very impressive. In this game, you're building ships and then launching them, and they go and get points. And you build small ships, launch them, you get fewer points, but it's faster. You build bigger ships, harder and slower, but worth more points. Uh, the game has some really excellent ideas in it. I'm not sure they all really gel together in the way that it should be, but we'll show it to you first before we decide. So what's included in the game is this board, some wooden pieces, and a deck of cards. The deck of cards is the most important thing. Each player gets five of these cards to start the game out. Uh, they'll have also a scoring piece here to keep track of their score in the ship so everyone knows what color they are. But basically what you're doing on your turn is you're able to play two of these cards for the action on each of them. One of the actions is go wooding. If that happens, you simply roll a four-sided die from one to four and that's how much wood you will get in front of you. Another action, and this is one of the bigger actions of the game, is to actually play ship parts on the board. So you have different kinds of ships that you can build depending on whatever you may have encountered or drawn. For example, you can build a really small ship made up of three pieces here. This is actually the second smallest ship. The smallest ship is made up of just two pieces. Or if you don't like those, you can build a really funky looking raft here made up of these four corner pieces. Well, that's not any good. There we go, four corner pieces. Or you can build an even bigger ship with the four corner pieces like that or you can even expand that and make it larger by adding a center piece so you can put down one or two cards uh, to continue building these once you have it finished it's then complete and at that point you can start building it by using build cards for example this build one allows me to put a piece of wood on one of the sections to show that that section is done or this one with a question mark, I roll the die, and I roll a two, and that lets me put two things on. Once the ship is completely built, it's then launched. And on the board up here, I will place my one of my ships on whatever size I built. So let's say I built the biggest one. When that happens, I'll get a certain amount of points equal to the ship's value. So for example here, the ship's value is five. I would get five points. Then, on future turns, I can also play cards that say sail, and that allows me to sail the ship one dot here. When the ship reaches the end, you'll get that many points. So you can see that a one level one ship here only needs to go one dot and it gets another point. So you can blow out a bunch of these smaller ships to get more points, or the bigger ship, which will take one, two, three, four, five dots, but is worth six points at the end. There are other cards you can play that are basically negative cards that will hurt your opponent. And if you don't have any cards that you don't want to do, you can play no cards and take one of three actions. You can go wooding, you can build a segment on your ship for free, and or you can sail your, your ship one space. So you can always sail a ship one space. You can always do one action, even if you don't have the cards that you want for that. And so this continues until one player reaches 25 points, at which point they're the winner. It's basically a race to get the most points the fastest. This is certainly a game with a, a unique, interesting theme, as you have this guy building these ships and getting wood. And if you play it very lightly, which means you just kind of say, hey, I'll play some cards, build some cards, and you're all talking and having a good time, I think the game will come across more enjoyable. If you're playing hardcore strategy, there's a few things that may frustrate you. The cards give you two actions, or you can take one action of your choice, basically, on your turn. And that's fine. That's actually not a bad idea. There's, there's some, The cards, though, that hurt other players can be pretty mean and nasty. And if you get hit by everybody on one turn, it can really throw you off. Also, building the boats, building the small boat seems like a good idea, but the ratio of how the boat cards are in a deck, for example, the centerpiece of the large boat, there's several of those in a deck, but they can only be used for that large boat. While there's other pieces that can be used as several parts in many boats, you would think there would be more of those. 
If you're going to make the strategy where you build little boats, send them off, build little boats, send them off, build little boats, send them off, then there should be more of those in the deck. As it is, I think it's a viable strategy, except for the fact that there's almost as many cards for the big boat. So why not build the big boat, send it off? It's slower, but it's still faster than building multiple small boats and sending them off. And then the die roll for getting wood, sometimes a little random. When you roll three ones in a row and the other person rolls three fours, I don't know, I, I, I can't think of a better way to, 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 to say it, and I do like randomness in games, but that felt a little bit too random. Now, it seems like I'm coming down hard on the game, and I'm really not, because it was very light, it was enjoyable, it seemed like it was a reasonable length, but I'm just saying for strategy gamers, this is not it. For light family fun, then that's who I would recommend this game for. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.